Okay, we're going to get ready to get started. We ask the brothers uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads, and we will face Jerusalem and open up. Our Father. Our Father. Which art in heaven. Which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. These things we pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. And King of Kings. And King of Kings. Amen. Amen. A reading come from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Once again, the reading comes from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody tuning in on the internet as well as on the phone conference line as we get into another Sabbath evening lesson. You know, the Sabbath is important. It, it keep, keep you reminded about the God of this Bible, the creator who created everything in six days and worked and rested the seventh day. It keep you reminded that he got he rested in order to give us some rest in the end, in the long run. And to keep you reminded that you got to labor to enter into his rest. So that's why it's good that we stay reminded and stay refreshed uh, on the Sabbath day and come together uh, each week. That's an important it's one of the Ten Commandments, so that shows you how important it is. Most people don't know that the Sabbath is just as important as reframing yourself from stealing and killing and committing adultery. So uh, I'm glad to be here, and we're going to get into tonight's lesson. I was in Atlanta last Saturday. That's the, that's the good thing with modern technology. I taught here last Friday night. And went to Atlanta. Well, two Fridays ago, I taught here and went to Cincinnati. Last Friday, I taught here and went Saturday to Atlanta. And uh, I'm going to do the same tomorrow. I'm going to be somewhere else tomorrow. But in Atlanta, we had a good, uh, good service. And then Sunday, we did what you call a kind of TV shoot, 30 minutes. So I did this on there, so I decided to do it again. Had some technical difficulties. And uh, that is, we've all heard about when somebody died, they didn't pretty much erase the fact that it's supposed to be a funeral. And they didn't turn it into a happy occasion, ignorantly they have. Turned it into a happy occasion. In other words, brothers and sisters, trying to put a pretty face and a pretty spin on death. That's what they try to do. 
And, and that couldn't be further from the truth, brothers and sisters. I mean, don't nobody, I understand where the idea will ultimately come from Satan, but I understand that don't nobody like death. But you, it is what it is. You can't get around it. You can't act like death is not really death. And that's where it come from, being that, you know, death is so devastating Man has long tried to figure out a way out of it. Look, it is a way out of death, but it's, a, it's according to as the Lord prescribed in the Holy Word, and it's summed up simply in the resurrection. That is the way out of death, brother and sister. There's no way that you don't die and you float on up to glory to be with the Lord in a pretty home going upon death. Nope. Death really is death. So that's what we're going to touch on today. The home going funeral fallacy. The home going funeral fallacy. We ain't heard no activity like that in a long time. We used to get that a lot. We got some CBs coming in. The home going funeral fallacy and that's what it is it's it's some false teaching some false thinking telling you that you when you go to a funeral they say really it's not a funeral this is a home going we supposed to be celebrate they didn't went home and I like to tell them sometimes when I do funerals I tell them I say yeah we're gonna show you what home going it is because the only home going it is at a funeral, brothers and sisters, somebody is getting ready to go back to the home they come from, and that is the dust. That's what the Bible substantiates. It don't substantiate this home going to heaven. How did heaven get to be your home anyway? That's, that should be the question. We didn't come from heaven. So that's the key to understanding the whole thing. And God said where we were going upon death. He gave, he gave away out of through his mercy. He gave away out of through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. But that's at a time appointed. So that's it. The home going funeral fallacy. The home going funeral fallacy. We're going to start off in Ecclesiastes, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read one verse here. Relatively, like I said, this is relatively small. Less than 15 scriptures, 54 verses. That's small by our standards, but that's 50 sometimes larger by traditional church standards. Ecclesiastes 6 and verse 3. Go ahead, my brother. If a man beget a hundred children and live many years so that the days of his years be many and his soul be not filled with good and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. Okay, so now you, you, you got Solomon letting us know that no matter how great your life is or it seemed to be, he said, for man begat a hundred children, that's a whole lot of children, and live many years. So that the days of his years be many, his soul be, be uh, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial. I say that an untimely birth is better than he. Because if you live this life, brothers and sisters, and don't find out about the Lord, it was all for nothing anyway. So that's one thing. You don't understand how to walk with the Lord. So that's one thing. But then he says something else. He said also that he have no burial. I say that an untimely birth is is better than he. Now, what's an untimely birth? That's what we would call nowadays a miscarriage, an untimely birth. He said a miscarriage would be better than this person. Why is he, why is he saying that? Because if he, if he don't know about the Lord and then he lived no matter how, how successful he was and then he go out and don't nobody, he died and don't nobody care about it, don't, don't nobody even acknowledge that he lived and died, he said, hey, it would have been better if he hadn't been born. An untimely birth is better than him. But the thing we want to pay attention to is that he said 
that he that also that he have no burial. See, and that's what happens. That's what comes with the funeral. You go to a funeral, you know, nine out of ten, you know, nowadays you got cremation, people get cremated, but it's one or the other. Normally people get buried. Cremation is just a faster trip back to the dust. Because since man sinned, that's been the order of the day that you live, you end up dying, and you go back to the dust. And there's no way out of that. There's no way around it. Since man sinned, you live. Once this life is up, you die, you go back to the dust from whence you came. It's not a secret, pretty home going to heaven, brothers and sisters. We can't read that nowhere in the Bible. But we're going to take a look at it. It's a burial that you got to look forward to when you die. Let's go to Genesis 3 and see where it was instituted at. Death, I mean, where, it was, where, where, where that was instituted at. Genesis, the third chapter. See, like I said, I know death, you know, we all would like to avoid death. But once man sinned, it's been an inevitable part of life. You end up dying. And the younger we are, the younger you are, you don't hardly even want to think about it because it seems so far off. And we know young people die too. But still, you don't have to get too old to realize People around you start to die, and you get introduced to it, and it really is death. That's the amazing thing. That's why I said this is this is really Satan really didn't put a number on people because in the beginning, when uh, Adam and Eve, when he tricked Eve, that's what he told Eve. Eve knew if you disobeyed, did what God said on to do, not to do, that we gonna die. And immediately Satan said, oh, you're not going to really die. You should not surely die. And it's amazing that this is what preachers and people are saying at funerals all the time. You go to a funeral, they say, they're not really dead. They sound just like Satan. What you mean they're not really dead? Like I say all the time, somebody owed me an explanation. I show up at a funeral because I got a phone call or I got a message that somebody died. Don't let me get to the funeral. You tell me they really not dead. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. Who lied to me? Somebody called me and said, well, they not really dead. See, that's just hocus pocus, brothers and sisters. Let's show you how crafty Satan is. The word of God. And, and the reality of the word of God is right in our face, and we let Satan turn it around into something else. That's what he did to Eve in the garden. God said, if you do so and so, you are going to die. That's in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. That's what God said. We're not going to even read that. Satan turned around and said, you're not going to really die. You know, God just blah, 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 blah. You're not going to really die. And she went for that. And we going for it to this day. But let's see what happened. We going to cut to the chase when they disobeyed, brothers and sisters. Because we going to get this home going straight. It's a home going, all right. The only real home going is back to the dust. See, the fallacy is they think they're going to heaven. That is not biblical. That's not from God. And we going to see it. Genesis 3 and 17. Read it, bro. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Now, wait a minute. Starting off, the, this, is, this is a sentence being passed. It's a sentence being passed for a crime committed or, as the Bible says, a sin committed. It's a sentence being passed. It's judgment. So we can't make it pretty. Can we make verse 17 pretty? Read it one more time because y'all don't hit me. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, uh -huh. because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you did something wrong by listening to your wife in this case. 
Go ahead. And hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Wasn't, wasn't no apple, but that's another lesson. It was some spiritual fruit, but that's something else. But that's what they did. They ate some, got some bad information. Go ahead. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Not good at all. So we're already off to a bad start. And it's only get worse. And that's where that's life summed up. That's why the most important thing in life now is to find out about the Lord because this one going to end. You need to find out about the Lord before it's over with. Because this one going to end. And if you haven't found out about the Lord and start doing his will, you're going to wish you would have never been born. Because what the Lord got prepared, because it's prepared, because it's something else called the second death. See, this death, though it's death, is just sleep. You don't know nothing about it. So that's that's the good thing about this death. You're not feeling no pain. You're not feeling anything. So in a manner of speaking, when people say we're well, in a better place, well, that, that's, that depends, yeah. If they was in a lot of pain and suffering, yeah, that is a better place. But they haven't went to the home going to heaven. That's the point. They haven't went there. They went to the home going back to the dust. But in, in short, since man disobeyed, life is relatively rough and short, and then you die. That's it. So he started off, he said, because you did so-and-so, curses the ground for your sake. So now life is going to be hard. You're going to have to work hard, make a living. We all see it and have to deal with it. If you don't work hard, you end up getting locked up because you stole something. Go ahead. What else? 18. Let's see how if it gets better or worse. Go ahead. With the middle of 17. Okay. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. In sorrow shalt thou eat of the dust. Eat of the ground all the days of thy life. 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Uh-huh. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Thorns and thistles. That means it's just like having a job and don't get paid good wages. That's what he's saying the earth is going to produce. You're struggling for the most part. Go ahead. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Still, it's work, isn't it? In the sweat of your face you're going to eat bread. None of this is meant to be pretty. So why are you going to go to a funeral and put a pretty spin on this whole event, which is all based on man transgressing God, sinning? In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread until what? Till thou return unto the ground. Uh oh, they go to home going, brother and sister, because we didn't read Genesis 2, 7. You read that on your own. We just cut into the chase. He said he, he made man. When he made Adam, he made him from the dust of the ground. He formed a man out. That's so you, boy. God is a great creator. He, don't, he just grabbed, he grabbed some dust and made a man. Got him there. Formed him. Just like you make something out of clay or you make something out of marble. God took some dirt and made man. Had him a man. Boom. Then say, let me make him alive. Hit him with some breath in his nostril. He said, breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. That's in Genesis 2, 7. So no wonder, since he made him for dust, understanding that, no wonder here at verse 19, he said, in the sweat of your face, you're going to eat bread till thou return unto the ground. Now, how clear is that, brothers and sisters? Why are we going to let a preacher tell a bald-faced lie at a funeral that the person is not getting ready to be buried, really, or they just going to bury that, but some part of the person is going to be with the Lord that you ain't never seen. You can't prove it. That would make this mute if the person really wasn't going back to the ground. I know what they say. Some of them get slick. They say, well, you know, the body go back to the ground. But see, that spirit, and we're going to touch on the spirit too. We kill all them lies. That spirit in them go back to God. Look, if, if that was really you going back to God, this don't mean what it's saying. It wouldn't be giving you a cursed situation for sin. It wouldn't be judgment. But no, he said, read 19 again, Genesis 3, 19, read it. 
In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Until what? Till thou return unto the ground. For what? For out of it wast thou taken. That's right. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. I mean, it don't get no clearer than that. And I have even some preachers, they done lied to you and told you they went to a home going in heaven, and then they're going to do what's called a committal and say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. They go back to the dust. Wait a minute. I thought you just said they went to a pretty home going to heaven. Your whole, you killed your own, your own lie that you've been telling for 45 minutes. He said, for dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return. See, this is, this is the home going right here. You're going back where you came, back to the dust. It's some good news at the end, thanks to Jesus, but right now, it is what it is. Death is death. Let's go to uh, John 3. Let's look at something in John 3, something Jesus said that don't, don't nobody pay attention to who want to have this pretty home going to heaven. John 3, and we're going to read one verse. John 3. So all this stuff is in the Bible for our edification, but... We got preachers. Jesus said, beware as many false prophets. We got them lying to us. That's why they not reading no Bible. That's why at best you get one verse in service. At best. John 3, and we're going to read one verse here, verse 13. But we put a whole lot of verses because we let the Bible explain itself. The Bible will interpret itself because there's no private interpretation. I can't have my interpretation. This brother have his interpretation. She have her interpretation. It don't work like that. Now, the Lord is telling you a story, and it's explaining itself when you put the pieces together. John 3 and verse 13. Read that, my brother. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, uh -huh. but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Now, this is absolute, brother and sister. Jesus is talking, and he said, and no man hath to send it up to heaven. See, somebody been lying to us then because they acting like that's where people go when they die. They go to this home going to heaven. Been to plenty of funerals, and that's where, that's where they, that's the way they go with it. That's why we mess them up at funerals. Boy, they hate to see us coming now. Because we're cause we going to give it to them real. We're going to give them what the Lord said. And it's good news at the end of it, provided you do God's will, because though death really is death and you go back to the dust, it's something called the resurrection. And if you really didn't go to, if you really didn't go to the dust and went to heaven, there would be no need for a resurrection. So you just erase the resurrection by your lie saying that somebody went to be with the Lord when they died. Wait a minute. What happened to the resurrection from the dead, from the dust? That's where you got to come back from. So it can't be a pretty home going when you're at somebody's funeral. Then you're going to take them out and do like the Bible said. You're going to bury them. You're going to even say, rest in peace. Or you're going to say, where are you take? Well, this is the last resting place. You're going to say all that stuff, and then you're going to believe a lot of that. You went somewhere. When they go where? They haven't went nowhere. That's why I say that is the epitome of being okie doped. When they show you the body and say it wasn't a murder, it wasn't death, they show you the body. I say all the time, if I get to a funeral and you want to tell me so-and-so is not dead, at least hide the body. Hide the evidence, man. You showing the evidence. That's evidence of death. They say, that's not really them. That's just one lie after another. Well, who did I come to say farewell to then? That's not them. Who the heck is that then? Just want, they, they want you to believe some hocus pocus instead of the word of God. 
So Jesus said here in John 3.13, he said, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Because Jesus know the end from the beginning. So he's the only one, brothers and sisters, that went to heaven. And it's a clear record of that all over the Bible. Jesus said, I'm going back to heaven. When I, and it's even in Acts 1, they show him ascending up back to heaven. It was, it was, it was all, he already knew that. That was going to happen. Matter of fact, you read John 6 on your own. Jesus said, I came down from heaven. He came down from heaven. So, Jesus went back to his home when he died. But notice he didn't even go like he didn't even go like the people make like happen nowadays. He didn't just die and they had a dead body and say, "Well, it's not Jesus. He gone to be with the Lord." No. Cuz if you got a body, that's evidence of death. How did Jesus do it? He did it the way he going to get us out of death. He died and was buried for three days and three nights and resurrected. And when he resurrected with a new body, then he ascended up to heaven. That's the order of things. So even Jesus, it wasn't no hocus pocus stuff where the uh, disciples walking around with the body of Jesus. This is Jesus, but this, he really gone. He not here. No. When they went to his grave looking for him, they didn't find nothing but the clothes that he had on, brothers and sisters. They didn't find no body. Because when he resurrected, he was no longer dead. As long as there was a body, he was dead. That's elementary. So he's the one that came down from heaven and went back to heaven. After he died and resurrected. Other than that, this verse said no other man done done that. So somebody read, they might read in Kings where it say Elijah sent up to heaven. Well, that's the benefit of having understanding that it's more, it's multiple heavens, brothers. So the sky is heaven. When you're in an airplane, you're really in heaven. You're in the clouds of heaven. But it's multiple heavens. So 2 Corinthians 12, it even referenced the third heaven. See, that's, what, that's the one where everybody at, where the Father is. Jesus sitting at the right hand right now, and the angels are at. That's the third heaven. That's what he's referring to. And that's what other people are saying when they got this home going. They're saying they're going to heaven to be with, the, be with God. Absolutely not. Who else you calling Jesus a lie? Right here. This is what I'm saying. When you start believing for some false teaching, brothers and sisters, you are blaspheming God. That's why we are harsh on it because it's serious you calling god a lie you calling jesus a lie right here. read it one more time john 3 and 13 read it and no man hath ascended up to heaven now do you get any clearer than that absolute and no man no man hath to send up to heaven except who but he that came down from heaven but he that came down from heaven See, we came from the dust. We didn't come down from him. See, Jesus existed prior to becoming a man, brothers and sisters. We didn't. We came from dust because we came through Adam. Jesus had a body prepared for him. He didn't come from dust ultimately. He just was made a man. He, had, he existed prior and was in heaven and took on the form of a man and came down here. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw this in. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Read uh, John 6. I mentioned it. John 6 and 38. Throw that in there right quick. Because this stuff is crystal clear. John 6 and 38. Read it. <clears throat> For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. You see what Jesus said? I came down from heaven. Not to do my will, but the will of him. That's, but that's where he come from. So that's his home. So when he died, he was buried first. Resurrected. He went back to heaven. Nobody else done that. 
You see how clear that is? Nobody else said, no other man have done that. So how are we letting preachers tell us so-and-so and everybody's going to heaven in this home going at the, at the funeral? They get mad at you. If you try to kind of get sad, I don't know why y'all sad. This ain't no funeral. Like you supposed to be dancing. This is a home going. And we celebrating. No, it's a funeral. Somebody died. And we saying goodbye. We going to miss them. We can still, we still have some hope because if the person believed in God, we know it's going to be okay in the end. But right now, it is what it is. Death really is death. So this home going to heaven, we have ruled that out. We have showed that that's fallacy already according to Jesus' word. Now, let's go to Job 17. See, the real home going, brothers and sisters, is cut and dry, simple. It's back to the dust. They try to come up with all kind of cliches. Some of them go way back. You know, they come try to come, you know, one of the things they say, oh, well, see, they gone in the, to the afterlife. You know, afterlife really say what it really is, if you pay attention to it. They made something else out, out of it. But you know what I tell them? I say, yeah, they gone to the afterlife. You know what come after life? Death. That's what come after life. Death. That's it. There's no, they didn't just float somewhere else. But that's what man been wanting. That's what the Egyptians, that's why they come up with mummification and doing stuff, keeping the prime and preserve the body after death. That's why they came up with all that stuff. The ancient Egyptians did. That's why they came up with being able to uh, mummify the body. And not only that, to uh, what they do still to this day, embalm. They embalmed the body. The Egyptians started that long time ago where they embalmed the body. That's why 9 out of 10, when you go to funerals nowadays, in funeral five, six days, you really don't smell. I didn't smell some stuff before, though. But for the most part, you don't smell. If they hadn't embalmed the body, you, you have a hard time being in that place. Because... It don't take but a few days for decay and corruption to start setting in on the body and it starts smelling. So that's why they do that to this day. They do. But the Egyptians started as a way of preserving the body, thinking that they're going, you know, going into another place to the afterlife. No, they going to the afterlife, which is death. They going to the grave. Because it's punishment for sin. And it passed upon all men. We get to something after death. The afterlife is death. Now after death is what? The resurrection. And that's why whether you was good or bad, you're going to be in the resurrection. That's why this is a dangerous thing, this life. Because whether whatever, once you was born, you destined to get eternal Live for eternity, either eternal life with God or eternal damnation in the lake of fire. Let's go to uh, Job 17. So we're going to get back to the real home going. Because that one to heaven is fallacy. Saying that they went to heaven to be with the Lord. Jesus killed that. Even, even more, what, what was written in Genesis 3 said, Man going back to the dust from whence he came. 17, Job 17 and verse 13. Job 17 and 13. Job knew what home he was going to. Go ahead. If I wait, the grave is mine house. Uh huh. I have made my bed in the darkness. Wait a minute. He said, if I wait. And that's really everybody. It's just a matter of time. But he said, if I wait, the grave is my house. You want to know where your home going is after this life? The grave. Back to the dust from whence you came. That's your house. See, they just lying to us. Trying to put a pretty face on something God didn't intend to be pretty. God intended death as what it is. Punishment for sin. If I wait, 
The grave is mine house. Go ahead. I have made my bed in the darkness. That's right. Go ahead. I have said to corruption, thou art my father. That's right, because you start rotting. That's why like Job said, we can't read all of 14. Job 14, he said, hide me in the grave until your wrath be passed. Then remember me. Point a set time and remember me. And he said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Because this body corrupt and rot, but it's okay when you wake up, you're going to have a brand new body. That's the good news. That's why you want to do what you need to do right now. Because you think this body was made magnificent, which it is. This body is something else in itself. It healed itself, but it still died. Reproduce. God is awesome. But he got a body. He prepared a body for us that's going to be just like his. That's the one I want. A glorious body. We're not going to read that. Read Philippians 2 on your own. But he said, I have said to corruption, thou art my father. What else? To the worm, uh -huh. thou, art my, thou art my mother and sister. To the worm. Why do you say to the worm? Because you down there in the dirt with them worms. He said, I said to corruption, you my father. He talking about the grave. That's that house. That's the home going. Get it straight. To the worm, thou my mother and my sister, verse 15. And where is now my hope? Mm -hmm. As for my hope, who shall see it? That's right. They shall go down to the bars of the pit. Uh -huh. of, of the pit uh -huh. When our rest together is in the dust. When our rest together is where? In the dust. In the dust. Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You can't make nothing else out of that. And I know the little few scriptures, they go and try to twist up and make something out of them. We can disprove them in an instant. We're going to read a little something that they had tried to go to. I did a funeral in Philadelphia, brother. He, he, he was upset. He was upset at the end after I was done. Well, he thought I was done. We was doing a little people viewing the body again. And then he tried to pull a mutiny, boy. He started trying to sing. Uh, and then he started trying to preach while he's singing. All I know is. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I said, wait till I start talking again. I'm going to kill that lie too. I know the scripture he's talking about. We're going to read the scripture he's talking about. He don't know what it means though. Yeah, to be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. When? How and where? That don't mean, that don't erase that death is death. But we're going to get to that. Let's go to... Uh, Keep your finger in Job right here. We're going to come back in a second. Go to uh, Hebrews 9. This is crystal clear, brothers and sisters. That's why I say you really have to go for the okie doke to go for this. But they've been telling us this so long, we didn't took it for granted. I didn't even go to church. I was running the streets of Chicago acting a plum fool, but, but believed that I was going to go to heaven some kind of way. Believe that if I should die, that was my next step to go to heaven. Because they have flooded the earth with these lies. Hebrews 9, and we're going to come back this time. We're going to come back to Job, so hopefully you put your marker there. We're going to go to Job 30 in a second. But now we're going to read this one verse in Hebrews 9. Pick it up at verse 27. Hebrews 9 and verse 27. Go ahead and read it. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Go ahead and read 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. That's right. And See, Christ had to, he had to off, be offered for sins to get us out of death. That's how serious death is. Jesus had to come live a perfect life, sinless, and then die, which he didn't deserve to die. That's how deadly sin is. And that's how real death is. So he said, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And when he come back, what's going to happen? And unto them that look for him, mm -hmm. shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. See, that's when he come back. When the second time, his second coming. That's when we can get salvation. That's when the resurrection, we're going to get to that. That's when that's going to take place. But in the meantime, read 27 one more time. 
And as it is appointed unto men once to die. Now, how are we going to get around this? As it is appointed unto men once to die. That was appointed once Adam sinned. Then what? But after this, the judgment. But after this, you just go on to that home going and bypass judgment. That's what they acting like, right? Judgment haven't got here yet. So how is it when somebody died, they done made their home going and judgment haven't even got here? Jesus haven't came back. Judgment haven't gotten here yet. That makes absolutely no sense. That's just ignoring this verse. As it is appointed unto men once to die. See, it wouldn't be talking in that vein if it was a pretty home going to heaven when somebody died. Then, then again, he told you what's the next step. You got to get judged, meaning God got to wake you up in the resurrection and judge you. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And God not going to have nobody go to heaven when they die and then lay on have judgment on say, what you doing? You've been in heaven a long time. You know, but you, I look at these books, you was pretty bad. Go to hell. <laughs> that wouldn't make no sense. So you got to wait on judgment. That's the, that's the moral of that story. You have to wait on judgment. Let's go back to Job, like I said, Job the 30th chapter. But he said, as it is appointed unto men once to die. Let's see. That's the appointment. We see we all got to make that appointment, brother and sister. You can be late for a lot of stuff. You're going to be on time for that one. We all got an appointment. People want to talk about, well, well, I'm going with my destiny. Well, this is your ultimate destiny. But the good news is, and this is why we here obeying the Lord as best as we can, keeping the Sabbath day, keeping his other laws and statutes, because that's what he required you to obey him. That's what brought the first death, disobedience. And now we're going to let a preacher lie to us and tell us death, not death, and oh yeah, you ain't got to do nothing. Boy, you sound just like Satan. You ain't got to worry about death. Death ain't really death, and I can do what I want to do, and I'm saved by Christ. That ain't nothing but Satan. They got in trouble for disobeying and the Lord put death and you ignoring it, taking the Lord lightly and that's an example that the Lord is not playing with you and you see it in your face every day. Job 31 verse 23, read it. For I know that thou would bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Job knew a lot. And see, you can be real smart or you can be real dumb. Don't have to know much, but you should know this. He said, I know that thou would bring me to death and to the house. You want that home going? This is best as it get, baby. Right here. This is the home going when this life is up. Back to the dust from whence you came. That's where we start off in Genesis. But we just read in the New Testament. To, let's show you this whole Bible go together. We read in Hebrews 9. He said, as it is appointed unto men once to die. That's an appointment we got to make. Job understood this appointment. He said, for I know that thou would bring me to death to the house appointed for all the living. We all got to go that way. So why are we going to get to the funeral and believe this fallacy that sister so-and-so then made her transition and went on home to be with the Lord? Now, she went home okay, and we just read it. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. See, this is not pretty, and it's not popular to tell the truth. But the Lord said the truth will set you free. You'll be free from the bondage of those lies, having you going the wrong way. 
Basically calling God a lie. Because God said one thing. If you saying, if you believe it and saying something else, you saying God don't know what he's talking about. He lying. Ecclesiastes 12. The easiest way to understand this, though, is to remember one thing. That death was created by God as punishment for sin. Once you let that sink in, there's no way you're going to come up with a pretty home going out of that. We see people dying all, die all the time, all kind of ways. And when we hear it, our natural instinct is to not to put a pretty spin on it, but then we let the preacher lie to us. And all of a sudden, we got a new outlook. No, it's a lie. Ecclesiastes 12. This is one of the ones they used to use back in the day. I'm sure they still try to use it. But see, we, when you know the Bible, you know whenever they use the scripture out of context, you know how to straighten it out. Like Satan brought scripture to Jesus, tried to convince Jesus of something that was wrong with scripture. Told Jesus, well, cast yourself down, man, because it's written. And it was written what he said, but it didn't mean what he tried to make out of it. It's written so-and-so, so-and-so. Jesus said, yeah, it's also written so-and-so, so-and-so. So that rebuffs the way you using that. Same thing here. They've been using this for years to say, oh, yeah, the, uh, the body go to the ground like we've been showing. Make that home going to the dust. But see, your spirit go back to be with the Lord. Even at my mother's funeral, my own mother's funeral, I knew I'm sitting there looking at the preacher. No, the preacher is lying. I wanted to get up there and take over, but I wasn't able to. But even there, somebody ended up reading the scripture about the resurrection, and he had to explain that. So he went a step further. He tried, he had to explain it because once you even understand that. Simple fact that just like Jesus died and resurrected, that's really what we got to do, die and resurrect. That's how we're going to get eternal life. Once you understand that fact, somebody got some explaining to do. Because if I already made a home going, soon as I died, what the heck I'm getting resurrected for? What need is for me to get resurrected? Because that's what they tell you when you die, when somebody die. They say, well, see, that old body wasn't no good. So that ain't really her. You know, you at the funeral, she in the casket. That ain't really her. That body was just her shell. She really, the real her is going to be with the Lord. Made her transition, made her home going. That body wasn't no good. Okay, well, why is the Lord calling it a resurrection from the dead then? So this preacher got slick. He had a little doctor degree and everything. He got slick. He knew he needed to explain that because somebody read about the resurrection. And he said it. He said, well, you know, so you see, she, she's in heaven now. But see, you might say, well, what's going to be raised? He actually touched on it. And I'm looking at him. You might say, well, if she's in heaven, well, what's going to be resurrected at the day? Well, see, what's going to happen is the that spirit got to reunite with that body. And oh boy, what a day that's going to be. I'm looking at this dude. <laughs> Why? If the body wasn't no good in the first place, it was just a shell. Why would it need to reunite with the spirit? But he had to tell another lie because... The resurrection had been put on the table. So now he got to explain where it's going to be, you know, a reuniting. Uh-uh. You die, you go to the dust. When Jesus come, he going to wake you up with a new body, period. Ain't got to be reuniting because you ain't been nowhere. You've been sleeping. He going to wake you up with a new body, period. They make it so complicated to keep you in the dark. Instead of just going with the truth. Please ask the 12 and 1. Go ahead. 
Remember now thy, thy creator in the days of thy youth, mm -hmm. while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, uh -huh. when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, uh -huh. while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, uh -huh. nor the clouds return after the rain. Okay, so now, why is he even addressing youth? Because again, the youth, they really ain't putting too much focus on death. You know, like death is kind of seen far off, even though we know young people die. But for the most part, more older people die. Like the older I get, the more people I know dying. I just talked to somebody or talked to my uncle. He told me another brother uh, passed away, go to the Israel of God. So the youth, you know, don't really feel their mortality as older people might. You know, and the more and more you start going to more and more funerals, hey, you start to feel your mortality knowing that, hey, it's just a matter of time. Everybody you ever known went that way. People study going that way. Sometimes we kind of have in the back of our mind, well, not me. Well, yeah, you too. Everybody got to go that way. Ain't nobody slipped through the crack. So, we can mention Enoch. That's a whole one in, a, one in billions. That don't even count. So, I understand that. But, the bottom line is, he's addressing the youth to put it on the table for them because it's coming for you too. It's coming for you sooner than you think. So he's telling you, because again, the all important thing in all of this, brothers and sisters, is that while you got some time in this life, you get your act together, because it's going to end. You get your act together, start to do what God wants, then you'll be prepared when this life ends, you'll be prepared for the next life, when the Lord wake you up to get eternal life and live forever. This is what it's all about. So this is why he's addressing the youth in such a manner. He said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. What do you mean while the evil days come? What's the evil day? When you start getting the old time to die. Even, you know, you, you, you see people getting old. They end up in, you know, we've been visiting some uh, nursing homes and stuff. They in nursing homes. Holly, don't nobody care about them. All kind of aches and pains. That's why they end up in a place like that because, you know, they can't really take care of themselves no more. That's what he's referring to. The day's getting evil now. So he's letting you know, don't wait to try to get your act together when it get to that point. Don't wait till it get to that point. Try to get on top of this thing Sooner than that. Read it again, 12 and 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. See, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. Think about the Lord and start trying to do what you're supposed to do while you're young. Go ahead. Verse 2. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, uh -huh. nor the clouds return after the rain. Okay, so now what it is, brothers and sisters, just to sum up these next few verses, we're going to read through them. But to sum them up, he told you the story at verse 1. Everything from verse 1 on down till we get to the punchline is kind of like a, a parable or an analogy about verse 1. So he said at verse 1, remember now you're creating the days of youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. You know, that's self-explanatory. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure. Get on your job while you're young. Before your time is running out, you, you getting ready to die. Then everything else is an analogy concerning that. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not dark. In other words, get busy before this time, time of death is upon you. That's what he means by the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened. Nor the clouds return after the rain. This is an analogy for when it's time to die. Go ahead, verse 3. 
in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. And that's when somebody die. Hey, hey, hey. Death get everybody attention, brothers and sisters. You can be real strong. You can be a mighty man. Hey, you see somebody close to you die. You, st- you, you pay attention to that. Go ahead. And the strong men shall bow themselves. And the strong men shall bow themselves. That's right. Go ahead. And the grinders cease. Uh huh. But they are few. Uh huh. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. You know, it's a different kind of day. Sometimes you have funerals. Hey, you, you be recollecting on that day. Go ahead. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. Uh huh. When the sound of the grinding is low. Uh huh. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. Uh huh. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. He said, remember your creator before it's time to die, before it get to this point. Keep going. Verse 5. Mm-hmm. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high. When they shall be afraid. See, people start thinking about God. That's why I, it, it sounds kind of sick or morbid, but I prefer, you know, I do funerals and weddings. I prefer to do a funeral than a wedding. Not that I want to see somebody die, but as far as the conversation People is be open and listen to God more at a funeral than a wedding. People ready to get drunk at a wedding. When you be hurry up and finish so we can get to the, you know, the after party, whatever they call it, the reception. But at at funerals, people be more receptive. That's why we didn't we didn't converted people to the gospel by doing funerals. I ain't seen nobody ever get converted from doing wedding. We read scriptures at wedding too. Read scriptures at funeral, read scriptures at a wedding. Ain't nobody thinking about no at a wedding. But people's minds are open and a little more attentive because they start to feel their mortality at a funeral. So this is what he's getting at. He said, verse 5, also when they shall be afraid. Of that which is high. Go ahead. And fear shall be in the way. Uh-huh. And the almond tree shall flourish. Uh-huh. And the grasshopper shall be a burden. Uh-huh. And desire shall fail. Uh-huh. Why? Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the street. Oh, wait a minute. There go that home going. See, we know it's a home going. They just got the place wrong. They telling you you die and go to heaven. No, you die and go back to the dust from whence you came. That's your home for the time being. He said, because man goeth to his long home. You're going to be there. Man goeth to his long home and the mourners goeth about the streets. That don't sound like it's pretty and it's a home going to heaven. Because it's not. It's a home going back to the dust. Verse 6. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, uh-huh. or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitch, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, uh-huh. or the wheel broken at the system. See, still getting your analogy for when it's time to die and you got to deal with death. Then what? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Finally, he summed it up exactly what it is. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it were. The exact same thing we read in Genesis, didn't he? Go ahead. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now they take that one half a verse and mess all that we done read up. Not just in this place. We done read countless other places proving that death is death when you die. You go back to the dust from whence you came. That's it, period. That's it. But they take that half a verse, oh, see the spirit go back to, brother, see, you don't understand. I'd have people quote, I'd show them countless scriptures. They say, but what about the spirit that go back to God, brother? I say, you don't understand the spirit that go back to God. <laughs> Evidently, if you can't understand what we done read that's plain and simple, the Lord said, because you Eight of the tree, you're going to have a hard life, and then you're going to return to the ground from whence you came. Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Now, why say that in this verse? Verse 7, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Who is that? What is that? That's you. Now, this spirit that's going back to God, it's not you. It's something God gave you that enabled you to live. And when your time of living is up, 
quite naturally, God take that back. You don't need it no more. That's already you going to the dust. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit, that don't sound like it's you. That sounds like it's something God loaned you. Because that's all it is. It's something God loaned you. You going back to the dust. Then shall, then the spirit shall return to God who gave it. They turn that in to see my spirit going to be with the Lord. No. You going to the dust. And we'll see what that spirit is. Go to uh, James 2 first. Go to the New Testament. James 2. But we talk in death. So obviously in the equation, that spirit going back to God is necessary for you to die. That's why he said it like that. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it were, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. <clears throat> it's necessary for God to take that spirit. James 2 and 26. Read that one verse. And, and he's saying a lot here, twofold. We're not dealing with the first part or with the latter part, but all of it's good to know. 2 and 26, read it. For as the body without the spirit is dead. See, for as the body without the spirit is dead. So that's exactly what we were just reading. See, but even here, it's not making you think the spirit is you. It's something God gave you to make you live. And the only thing in Genesis that God gave you to make you live is the breath in your nostrils. That's the spirit. See, spirit refer to different things in the Bible. That's the first thing people need to understand. It don't always refer to one entity or one thing. It refers to different things. And it often refers to the unseen. It refers to the unseen. So how many of us have seen the breath of life? Who can raise their hand and say, oh, I've seen it. Can't nobody say they've seen the breath of life? You can't even see the wind. When you seen the wind? I had somebody say, no, I seen the wind. Look at the tree. No, you see the effects of the wind. You haven't seen the wind. You see the effects of it. You, but we know the wind exists. But we haven't seen it. So that's why he referred to this breath as spirit. Because it's unseen. It's an entity... We got it. We know we breathing, but we haven't seen it. And I don't care what kind of doctor you are. You can't figure it out. I heard a doctor say, he said, they ain't figured out how in the world a baby is in water for nine months when a woman is pregnant and then born and start breathing. They ain't figured that transition out yet. And obviously, they can't figure out how to keep, you know, they put people on life support, but they, that's just, that's just using equipment. The person's still basically dead. So they, they ain't figure out how to keep nobody alive permanently with the breath of life. They, so this is, this is something above our pay grade. But he called it spirit. That's what he's talking about in. This is what he's talking about. At verse 26, he said, for as, this, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so what? So faith without works is dead also. See, that's very important. People want to act like you don't have to do nothing. See, Satan telling multiple lies all to lead you to hell. First of all, you don't have no fear of God because he done took, he done made you like, well, you ain't going to really die. Death is not really death. And God is threatening you with death, telling you for disobedience, you die. And if you keep being disobedient, I'm going to kill you again. But Satan took that off. Oh, no, death is not really death. Even when it comes to the lake of fire, God wouldn't burn you forever. Yes, he will. According to the Bible. 
But Satan and watered it down. So then it's easy to say he didn't water down the punishment. So it's easy to say, and you ain't really got to do nothing. God know your heart. You ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got to do. It ain't about work. Just have faith in Jesus. How many times we heard that? Just have faith in Jesus. He your personal savior. Do that fly with this verse. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You don't even have no faith unless you put some works on the table, brother and sister. But as the body without the spirit is dead, we need to understand this spirit then. This is what we're talking about. Obviously, the body is dead. But this spirit is not another you going to be with the Lord. That's what they want to make it out to. Let's let the Bible explain what the spirit is. Let's go to Job 27. It's the same thing. Same thing he told you in Ecclesiastes. He told you, you dying and going back to the dust. That's you. That's where you at. You dying going back to the dust from whence you came. Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And the spirit shall return to God who gave it, right? As, then he just read again, as the body without the spirit is dead. Well, let's identify the spirit because that's the lie they want to use. Oh, brother, I know you right. See the, see, the body die, but the spirit live forever. Huh? They gone to glory. Made they home going. You are lying, the truth not in you. Job 27 and 1. Let's read it. Go ahead. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, mm -hmm. As God liveth, who have taken away my judgment, uh -huh. and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul. Job was going through some drama, but he knew what the end of the matter was. That's why he stayed the course and kept serving God. He said, God had put it on me, but that's okay. I'm going to endure. I'm going to keep serving. I don't care what he take from me. Job was smart, boy. God took everything from them. Made, then let Satan made him sick and everything. But Job said it right off the bat. He said, I didn't come here with nothing in the first place. Naked came into the world. Naked, I'm going to leave. Praise the Lord anyway. Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth that have taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who hath vexed my soul. He knew what was happening to him was ordained by God. He knew that. But yet and still, what did he have to say about it? Go ahead. All the while my breath is in me. All the while my what is in me? My breath is my in me. My breath is in me. And what else do we call it? Go ahead. And the spirit of God is in my nostrils. Wait a minute. You got the spirit of God up your nose? In your nostrils? Exactly. That's the spirit that God take from you. It's called breath. He just used it interchangeably right here, right? He said, all the while my breath is in me. You know, Job is just getting dramatic, brother and sister. And he's repeating himself. He's saying it in a dramatic fashion. Really what he's saying, as long as I'm living, I'm not going to cross God. That's really what he's saying. As long as I'm living. And we say the same thing. We said it. People have said, as long as I got breath in me. You know, so-and-so, so-and-so. Because you know, once you don't have breath in you, you, you can't. Ain't nothing you can even verify. So that's what Job is dealing with. He said the same thing people say now, that all the while my breath is in me, as long as I'm breathing. And, said another way, the spirit of God is in my nostril. See, people want to act like, well, that spirit, it's a, little, it's a spirit man in us. I... When the body go back, that spirit man just leave the body and it going up to the Lord. Well, that spirit man must be up your nose, according to this. So you better not blow too hard. You might blow him out. Your spirit man be on the ground. Oh, I stepped on my spirit man. No, it's not a little person in you. You are you. You are all you got. When you die, you dead and go back to the dust. That's why God got to wake you up from the dust. The spirit that's in you is on loan from God to make you live, to give you life. When your time of living is up, whoop, he take that breath. That's why 
They don't sign no death certificates until when? The last breath has been taken. When they take the last breath, they sign the time. Because as long as you breathe it, you could have been shot, stabbed, kicked, everything. But as long as you breathe in, you're still alive. But when you take your last breath, that's when it's over with. So that's the ingredient that God gave us to make us live. Quite naturally, that's the ingredient that he take away when it's time for us to die. And he promised death because we sin. So he got to do it. So that's what all of this means when he said the, the, the dust going to go back to the, the, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall go back to God who gave. He take the spirit from you, that breath that you're breathing. And you ain't the only one breathing it. All the animals breathe the same breath. They live the same way. People get carried away. But they don't understand. They didn't make, see, that's when you blow spirit up and don't understand it. You got to know what spirit means when you read it. It means different things in the Bible. Now, the spirit of God that fills you up in the mind, hey, that's his word. Now, the spirit of God that he sent, the being that he sent, God is a spirit himself. See, so it means multiple things in the Bible. But the spirit that's in you to give you life is the breath. Cut and dry. Read that one more time. 27 and 3. Go ahead. All the while my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. What I won't do. My lips shall not speak wickedness nor my tongue utter deceit. As long as I'm breathing. I ain't going to cross God. I ain't going to talk crazy about God. Job understood. He knew that he didn't even get mad. He didn't even say, well, Satan, that old devil ain't no good. Even though the devil was doing it to him. But he knew the devil couldn't do nothing to him unless God allowed it. So he, so he knew God was in control, and he said, as long as I'm living, my lips ain't going to go against God. And, and that's good because that was the play. That was Satan's play. That's what Satan, see, Satan do stuff to you in your life because he trying to get you to go against God. So that was the play. He told God, let me do so-and-so to Job. He had curse you to your face. Let me hurt him a little bit. He ain't ready. And God said, go ahead, try my servant. Job is a perfect man. That's why God blessed Job more in this life. Job said, Job thought it was over for him in this life. He just knew, huh? I'm going to die. I'm going to get mine in eternal life. That's okay. That's good enough. But God said, no, nah, I'm going to give you some more in this life because you my servant. He blessed him with 10 times what he had because Job held on. And he's a great example that whatever you're going through, it's not worth sacrificing eternal life. So Job said, hey, come whatever come my way, I'm going to serve God because I know what the end of this is. Because we're going to die in this life either way it go. We're going to die. So we might as well prepare our bed the right way for the next life. So that's what he meant. But he used terminology to show as long as I'm living, as long as I'm breathing. And he said, the spirit of God is in my nostril. Just like James said, as the body without the spirit is dead. Now we know what spirit, the breath of life. That's it. That's what make the body die. They stop you from breathing, you die, period. Cut and dry. Let's go to uh, Psalm 146. See, this is so easy to prove what happens upon death. So easy to disprove the lie about a home going to heaven when somebody died. Now, the only home going, brothers and sisters, is back to the dust. We're going to get to the good news because after you make that home going to the dust, God got something else prepared if you didn't done right. Notice it's predicated on what you've done, though. 146 and 1. Psalm 146 and 1. Go ahead. Praise you the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Now, he's saying praise the Lord, of course. And notice, he really saying, this is David now in Psalm. 
Notice he's really saying the same thing uh, Job said. He just used different terminology. He's saying, praise the Lord. Then he turned around and said, while I have, he said, while I live, verse 2, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praise unto my God while I have any being. So he's saying the same thing. Really saying as long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm alive, I will praise the Lord. Whereas Job was saying as long as I'm breathing, I won't talk crazy to God. But they use, it's the same type of terminology. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Then verse 3, you read that? Uh, yes. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man in whom is, there's no help. That's why sometimes we get too carried away with men. That's why we don't teach people to trust in us here. Because men come and go. Men come and men go. We could be sharing with you the word of God, but that's what's important, the word of God that we're sharing with you. And you have some respect because of that. But other than that, you... Your trust is not supposed to be in men. Your trust is in God. Because, hey, those of us preaching the word, hey, all, like the Lord said in the Bible, he said all the prophets, great prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all of them dead. So they didn't teach nobody to trust in them. They teach, taught people to trust in what thus said the Lord. And that's why God even said, the prophet's dead, but my word is still here. So I'll be dead and gone. This word going to be here. And what I taught about the word is not going to change. So this is why David is saying this. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. Go ahead, verse 4. His breath goeth forth. Uh-huh. He returneth to his earth. Uh-huh. In that very day his thoughts perish. See, when once whoever it is, once the time is up, it's over with. He say his breath go forth. What do you mean? His breath leave him, brothers and sisters, which is also called what? Spirit, right? As the body without the spirit is dead. As long as I got breath in me and the spirit of God is in my nostril, his breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. That's the two-step dance with death. You stop breathing, back to the dust. Stop breathing, the spirit take, get taken back to the dust. His breath goeth forth, he returned to his earth in that very day, it said. What happened? His thoughts perish. His thoughts perish. That lets you know you don't live on and went to heaven and smiling down. Solomon said it much plainer in Ecclesiastes 9. The dead know nothing. And that's what David is really saying here. Once your breath leave you, you go back to the dust. That's what he mean when he said he returned unto his earth. Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. He said in that very day, his thoughts perish. You don't think no more. You ain't worried about no bills you didn't pay. You ain't worried about nothing. You go to sleep until the resurrection. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 6, 3. Ecclesiastes 6, 3. Ecclesiastes 6, 3. We're going to pick it up at 18. Like I say, this is crystal clear. So next time, because it happens often. You at a funeral... They tell you it's a pretty home going. You would know for sure that it's not the case. It's a home going. You can tell them what the real home going is. It's back to the dust. We're going to see what come after death. Because it's something after death. It's called the resurrection. Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. Read that, bro. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men. Uh -huh. That God might manifest them. And that they might see that they themselves are beasts. See, this is what this is what he trying to explain to us that hey, in this regard, when it comes to death, we know better than the animals. 
We just another animal that live and die. That's why the key for us is to get understanding why of God and serve God while we live and while we can, brothers and sisters. Because this life is short and then you die. So that's the key. Get some understanding and do God's will while it is time. Take advantage of the time you got. That's the only thing to separate us from the beast. Other than that, as far as life and death go, we all in the same boat. Whether it be the dog, the cat, the lion, the fish, hey, we come, we live, we die. Go back to the dust. So this is why he's speaking in this vein. He said, I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. He said, oh, I wish that, 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 that man had realized he know better than the beasts in this regard. Overall. What? 19. Mm -hmm. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. That which befalleth the mankind, the sons of men include women too. Befall if the animals, the beasts. Go ahead. Even one thing befalleth them. It was one thing befalling. What one thing? Go ahead. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Really? Why, why, why are we talking about this if death is not really death and we go to a pretty home going though? No, because that's not the case. Death was instituted because of sin. And it passed upon all men. It's appointed unto men to die once. We know, Job said, I know that God will send me to the house appointed for all the living, to the grave. So he said, even one, uh, one thing befall of man and animals. So even one thing befall them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other, yea, what? Yea, they have all one breath. Wait a minute. And we all, mankind and the animals, have one breath. We all breathing. We all live by the breath. And when the Lord take the breath, which he calls spirit in instance, because you ain't never seen it, don't have no control over it, can't grab it, you ain't seen nobody... About to take their last breath. Wait a minute. Uh-uh. I ain't done with you. Mm -mm. <laughs> if you could, you would. But you can't. That's what he mean here. Man don't know nothing about it. He said, yeah, they all have one breath. So that what? So that a man hath no preeminence above a beast. Uh-uh. For all is vanity. That's crystal clear. All is vanity in this regard. You live, you die. If it's not for the resurrection, we are all men most miserable too. Go ahead. All go into one place. Now, this don't get no clear, brothers and sisters. How many times we got to read it? All go into one place. Go ahead. All are of the dust. Uh-huh. And all turn to dust again. Why even say that if it's, it's, it's a lie? Because that's basically what they tell me when it's a pretty, you had a friend. I'm telling you, this stuff is running rampant. You had a funeral, they done made it into a celebration home going. This ain't no funeral. Why you call it a funeral then? Got to switch it up when I get there. Got programs say the funeral going to be here. Then you get there, it's not a funeral, it's a home going. Somebody keep lying. <laughs> Told me somebody died, you telling me nobody died. And now nah, this ain't a funeral, it's a home going. Well, it's a home going all right, brothers and sisters, but we didn't found the home. The home is back to the dust because God made us from dust. We got to go back. All go unto one place. Didn't say two places. Didn't say a third go one way. Another part of you, little piece of you in you is going to be with the Lord. The spirit go back to God. That's not a part of you. That's something he loaned you. All go unto one place. All are of the dust. And all turn to dust again. Absolute. Now that's all clear. Everything we read is crystal clear. Even we cleared up the spirit. Somebody read verse 21. I didn't have it on here. But since we're here, go ahead and read it. Because they had that one verse. That's what preachers do. They get one verse that kind of little nebulous and unclear. And they use that to trip you up. 
Just one verse. See, but what about this, though? And they try to throw a little hocus pocus in there. And they don't care. They just throw something against the wall, whatever stick, to have you off what the Lord is saying. Because it's Satan. Read 21. Go ahead. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? See, now he said, who knoweth? So that, that's what they said. See, brother, that spirit that's in you, it, it go back to the Lord. Look, he just said, all go to one place. All of the dust and go to dust again. So when he said, who knoweth the sp spirit of man? In other words, death is inevitable. And I don't care how many PhDs he got, how many degrees he got, there's no doctor, there's nobody, nowhere that got a, enough knowledge and know about this spirit, this breath that you breathe, and that spirit that's in your nostrils to tell you when, you know, when you're going to take your last breath. Even they know somebody real sick. They be, they be kind of getting close sometimes because they see the signs. They've seen people before. But still, they messed that. They even told people, look, you, you, gonna live, you got six months to live. People live three, five years because they don't know. And they definitely don't know enough to stop you from dying. So that's all he's saying. The breath that we breathe in, you know, they like to practice on animals. You know, they get mouse that's breathing. They get animals. They practice on animals. They ain't did enough practice on enough animals to figure out how to keep somebody breathing. So that's what he means. Who know if the spirit of man that goeth upward? Since all breathe the same breath and all go to the same place back to the dust, evidently don't nobody know nothing about this spirit of man that goes, in other words, man is upright, he breathe upright, but he breathing the same breath that the beast breathing, he bending over, downward. It don't matter, practice on who you want to practice on, you ain't going to figure out how to stop from dying. He just saying you don't know it. He said that in another place. Flip over since we're here. I'm just adding stuff, but uh, we're going to be all right. I got a little time. Go back to Ecclesiastes, uh, up to Ecclesiastes, I think it's seven, to show you what he mean when he said, who know? See, y'all already cleared it up. He said, man don't have no preeminence over the beast. So it ain't like he trying to tell you where man go to heaven and the beast just go to the dust. He said, we all go to the one place. So you can't let one verse you might misunderstand throw you off. Uh, Ecclesiastics, because what he said there, that was uh, 3 and 21. After he told you all go to one place, all of the dust turn to dust again. Who knew of the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of beast that goeth downward to the earth? So since nobody know, he went on to say, Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion, for who shall bring him to see what shall be after him. See, that's verse 22. We didn't read it. So he's letting you know when your, when your number come up, it's time for you to die. Your time is up. Can't nobody get you out of that at all because don't nobody know enough about this spirit of life that you breathe and that the animal breathe to control it. Ecclesiastics 8, though, he said something similar here. Ecclesiastics 8, and pick it up at uh, verse 6. Pick it up at verse 6. Now, let's go cut to the chase. Verse 8, 8 and 8. Ecclesiastics 8 and 8. Go ahead, read it. There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. See, what he talking about? What spirit is he talking about? That breath you breathe in. You don't know nothing about this. There's no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. See, this spirit, this is not the spirit we get full of, by the way. By the, the spirit you get full of is the word of God. You get full of it right here. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's in John 6. So you got to understand, understand spirit means different things. There's no man that have power over the spirit. This is the breath. Go ahead. To retain the spirit. To retain the spirit. 
Go ahead. Neither hath he power in the day of death. Neither hath he power in the day of death. Go ahead. And there is no discharge in that war. You won't even fire shot in that war. You know what I'm talking about? The war on drugs. The war on crime. Hey, you can try that. Try the war on death. You won't even get a shot off. Because you can't control it. You can't retain the spirit, the breath that you breathe in. There's no discharge in that war. Go ahead. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Okay, now, go back to Ecclesiastes uh, 3, though. Because I want to get back on track to where I was. I just want to clear, because people let one verse throw them off track to 50 scriptures. You got 50 scriptures telling you one thing, then you read one verse that you don't understand, and you try to believe something else, something wrong with that. Read the last one again. Three and uh, 20, because this sums it up. You can't get around this. This is iron clad right here. This is what we've been seeing all over the book. Three and 20, go ahead. All go unto one place. Uh-huh. All are of this dust, and all turn to dust again. That's absolute, isn't it? Now, let's see when that's going, when we going to come out of the dust, uh, Daniel 12. Daniel 12. So clearly the home going to heaven that we get at funeral, that's a lie. That's fallacy. That's false doctrine, false thinking, false teaching. The best you get is going back to the dust from whence you came. But the good news is we ain't got to make up no pretty home going. If we obey God, we're going to come up on the right side in the resurrection. We're going to come out of that, that home going we went to the dust. We're coming back from that. Because that wasn't meant to be nice. Daniel 12 and verse 1. Daniel 12 and verse 1. Go ahead, my brother. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Uh -huh. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Uh -huh. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. See this is at the end. Great tribulation. The time that the Lord is coming. It's going to be a terrible time before the Lord come. But now the Lord is. When the Lord come. That's when the first of the dead is going to wake up. Verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Wait a minute. And many of them that sleep in the dust. See, that's what happened when you die, brothers and sisters. You go to sleep in the dust from whence you came. But at the appointed time, the Lord going to wake you up. That lets you know you got to still be there. Else this can't be fulfilled. How you go to be with the Lord in heaven, but then he said he going to wake you up in the dust. Somebody lied to us. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. See, and that, then it's going to be determined which side of the fence you awake on by what you did in this life. They're going to awake. Let's see who to wear. Go ahead. Some to everlasting life. Oh, some to everlasting life. So we're going to put them on the, on the right side. Some to everlasting life. But they not the only ones that's awakened. Everybody awakened in the end. It's a thousand year difference with some. But some to everlasting life. What about the others? And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Oh, we got a left side. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. But everybody going to wake when it's all said and done. So this is how the story go, brothers and sisters. There's no pretty home going upon death. It's an ugly home going because of sin back to the dust. But when Jesus come, that's when the awakening is going to come about. He's going to wake people up. Let's go to John uh, 5. John 5, New Testament. Jesus himself. He's going to reiterate what Daniel said. This whole Bible go together. It is ironclad, brothers and sisters. You can't get around this. That's why we read these scriptures. Because if I just stood up here and said this, 99.9% .9 of the people that hear me, they wouldn't believe it. They, half people don't believe when they read out the Bible. They're like, wait a minute. Told you how many times people that took the Bible. What kind of Bible? Wait, wait a minute. 
What you reading from? The Bible that you haven't read from. That's the problem. We've been listening to people tell us all these lies. John 5 and 28, read it. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Oh, so if the hour is coming, it's still coming. All that are in the grave is going to hear his voice until the hour will get here where all that are in the graves at. In the graves. But when the hour will get here, they're going to hear his voice and what's going to happen. Go ahead. And shall come forth. And they're going to come out the grave. Go ahead. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Notice, we got some on the right. Some going to wake to everlasting life. And then in Daniel, he said, some more going to wake to contempt and everlasting contempt and shame and contempt. See, so that's why it's important what we do right now, brother. So, because that's going to determine which side of the fence you wake up on. They that have done good, but notice they all sleep in the grave, in the dust, because they made that home going back to the dust. Go ahead. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And they that have done evil, they're going to get resurrected, but they're going to get resurrected to get damned. That's a sad state of affairs. That's why I refuse to have a hard life and struggle in this life and wake up to a worse. Uh-uh. Hey, I got to get something out this deal. So if this life going to be hard, then I'm going to die. Hey, I want something in the next one. So that's why I'm here trying to do what thus said the Lord consistently. Because other than that, see, if it wasn't for that everlasting damnation, I probably wouldn't even be here. If it wasn't for that, I'd probably, hey, go on, take my chances. But the Lord is not playing. He is not playing. He is saying you are going to get one or the other. There's no in-between. It's not a purgatory. Uh -uh. It's not just you're going to be asleep. I'm going to wake you up and damn you. And that's eternal. I don't know how, but, but like, like they erase, like they put a pretty spin on the first death, they are trying to put a pretty spin on the second death, like God won't really hurt you that bad. Yes, he will. He killing you now, and he said, I'm going to kill you double in the end if you don't get your act together. But you can do it because he said, and they're going to come forth. All that in the grave is going to hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done Good until the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil until the resurrection of damnation. So you could not have made a home going to heaven when the resurrection hasn't taken place yet. Then you're going to get judged. It's appointed unto man once to die, afterwards to judge. You got to get a resurrected for judgment. Now, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5. This is that one. I, said, I promised we was going to deal with it because this, with all this on the table, we got all this information clear cut. You can't get around it. Somebody still read one verse and have people in a tizzy. Oh, no. He said absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It don't mean what you think it means. So we read it. See, we don't have to shy away from none of the Bible. Because it all is good. It's just making sure you understand what it means. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. And we're going to let that explain itself. Because we just saw you're going to resurrect. See, and if you're going to be resurrected to get eternal life, or as Jesus said on the other side of the fence, will be eternal damnation, that means you got to come back in another type of form, in another type of body. See, because this body going to be been rotted, went to the dust, the worms going to eat it and all of that. You going to have to come back in another body. And it's a different type of body that he going to put you in so you can live forever in his kingdom. That's immortality. Or you can live forever in the lake of fire. That's eternal damnation. It's a special type of body. 
It's not going to be this body, but it's going to be you. So that's the key to understanding this. It's not like you just die and make a home going and it's over. 2 Corinthians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Go ahead. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. <laughs> See, this is what they like to throw out there. They say, oh, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So like I said, a brother in Philadelphia, he just said, all I know is to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I want to say, when, dummy? When? Does that mean when I die, I don't go to the dust from whence I came, all the scripture we done read, and they going to take me out and bury me, but I'm not there? Does that mean that? No, it don't mean that. But what it do mean is once I die, my next step is to be present with the Lord. And being that in that we read in Psalm 146, when you leave, your breath leave you, you return to the earth. In that very day, your thoughts perish. I'm not going to know nothing in the interim. The dead don't know nothing. So, yeah, in a manner of speaking, to be absent from the body. I die in this life. As soon as I stop breathing, as soon as I die, lose consciousness. I don't know nothing else. The next thing I know, it could have been a thousand years I was sleeping in the dust because you got to go to the dust until the Lord wake you up, right? All in the grave is going to hear his voice. Could have been a thousand years, but it don't matter. Then when he wake me up, that's going to be the next thing I see. So though it's an appointed time, there's no time left for the individual because they went to sleep like you go to sleep at night. You wake up the next morning, you're standing there before the Lord on judgment, see what's going to happen. So, yeah, I understand to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That don't mean the person not going out and, and not really going to be buried in the dust and wait on the resurrection and judgment. That's what I'm saying. We just got to use common sense. It's never been about that. Other than that, you taking away the punishment for sin, which is death, and going back to the dust. You removing that. How are you going to remove what God can set in order? Go ahead. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Wherefore we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So we labor. Because, yeah, to be absent from the body, our next step is going to be present with the Lord. We need to understand that. We need to see that's a warning. So, you know, you got a limited time to get your act together while you're living on this earth in this body. And when your time is up, you're going to meet your maker. And you're going to have to answer. That's what he's saying. So, while we are living in this body, he said, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Go ahead, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Wait a minute. Judgment they haven't got here, brothers and sisters. So when somebody die, they still got to wait on the resurrection and, and be judged by Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That what? That everyone that may that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. See, you got to answer for what you done done. And when you answer, that's when it's going to be determined what side of the fence you on, whether you've been resurrected to life or eternal damnation. That's when it's going to be determined. It's not presto you die and you make it home going and you with the Lord smiling down. That's just a great big lie. It's just not that way. Back up to verse 1. Now we're going to show you again one last time how it really works. See, the key word is mortality. Immortality. We mortals now. That's why we die. We're trying to get eternal life where we will be immortals. And that's going to take place at a 
set time, not when each one of us die. That's why we got to be resurrected. Go ahead, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. See, so what he's saying is that this, once this flesh and blood die, body die, hey, we know this is not the end because God going to wake us up from the dust with an immortal body. See, when you come out that grave, you're going to be you, but you're going to be a brand new you. That's the only way you can get eternal life. That's provided you done right. We already saw the other side of that coin. Go ahead. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. We're going to see what that house is from heaven look like. He really, brother, so he's just talking about that new body we're trying to get. That's the other thing, too. You're trying to say... Somebody died, but I'm looking at their body right there. And you trying to say they went to be with the Lord. No, it's only one of them. So they just got a different type of body prepared. So when they are alive, getting eternal life, I ain't going to see a dead body. No, because that's the part. That's them. The Lord going to have to bring them back with a new body. That's the key. You ain't going to see both of them. Like I said, when Jesus died, he was in the grave for three days and three nights. When he resurrected, they didn't find no other body still in there. Well, it's the body of the Lord. But see, he's not here. He's going to be, he going to heaven. Uh-uh, they didn't do that. Wasn't nobody. They went looking for his body. They went in the cave and every. They went in there, found the napkin that was on his head, found even the clothes. He had shedded the clothes. They found himself because he's immortal now. He don't even need those clothes. He could manufacture clothes if he want to. They found everything except the body because he was no longer dead. Long as there's a body, remember that. That's evidence of death, brothers and sisters. So he said, for this we groan earnestly designed to be clothed upon with our house or body, which is from heaven. Verse 3. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. That's right, because if you're not doing his will, you got some evil works, you're going to be naked, and then you're going to be on the flip side of that resurrection go ahead for we that are in this tabernacle in this flesh and blood body is all he's saying go ahead do groan we groan oh yeah definitely go ahead being burdened being burdened go ahead not for that we would be unclothed uh -huh. but clothed upon that what, what we waiting on that mortality might be swallowed up of life see we mortals now but we waiting on mortality that's the key mortality to be swallowed up of life we trying to get rid of this mortal. See, mortals die. Immortals don't die. God is an immortal. He's a spirit being. He don't die. See, that's what they, they talk about. That defines you as a dying, dying creature. Mortality. You die. We trying to get away from this, and it's only through the resurrection that mortality be swallowed by life. See, you again, that, that's a contradiction for you to tell me so and so died, and when I get there, you say she not really dead, she done made her home going. Look, it's either one or the other, brother and sister. Either I'm there for death or I'm there for life. Which one was it? I got a call that says somebody died. That's why I'm here. I'm there for death. That's what a funeral is. Wasn't meant to be a pretty home going in the first place. Let's go and wrap it up. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 42. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 42. It's all about the resurrection to life. We already saw you can, you're going to be resurrected to damnation if you don't get your act together. You don't want that, though. This is what you want. 42. 1 Corinthians 15 and 42. Read it. So also is the resurrection of the dead. How, how is it? 
It is sown in corruption. Uh -huh. It is raised in incorruption. So this is the resurrection of the dead. But why have a resurrection if you made your home going when you first died? Makes no sense. But the resurrection of the dead is like this. It is sown. Sown is planting like a seed. So when the body is sown, that old body that, that we go out and bury, is sown in the ground. It's planted in the ground. He's liking that body to the seed. He said, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. That was a corruptible body. Couldn't live no more. Couldn't go on any further. So it was sown in corruption, but he said what at the end of that? It is raised in incorruption. It is raised. On the flip side, at the resurrection, it is raised in incorruption. It go in one thing, it come out another. Keep reading. It is sown in dishonor. It is sown in dishonor. There's no honor in death, brothers and sisters. Death wasn't meant to be pretty. Death is evil. Understand that fact. It is sown in dishonor. Go ahead. It is raised in glory. It is raised in glory. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. It is sown in weakness. One way or another, there's some weakness that bring us about to death. But when it's come out the grave, what? It is raised in power. That's what the resurrection is about. That's when you're going to have power. Not upon the day you die. Go ahead. It is sown a natural body. It is sown. Now here you go with them tabernacles. It go in the grave. Sown mean planted. It go in the grave. It was a natural body. We all got natural bodies, which mean basically we mortals. We got natural bodies. We need something else, brothers and sisters. So it go in a natural body. Go ahead. It is raised a spiritual body. When it's raised at the resurrection, it's going to be a spiritual body. Jesus went in the grave as a flesh and blood man. Three days and three nights later, he came out as an immortal. That's why he was walking through doors on the, on the disciples. They, had, they were scared. They were going to come kill them. You know, once they kill your leader, you said, man, they... They're going to come kill us any minute. They had the doors locked and everything. So Jesus, he popping through the doors. And then he vanishing right in front of him because he was no longer a mortal. He had been raised and he's the forerunner for us. He leads the way for us. We looking to die and be raised with an immortal body. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead. There is a natural body uh -huh. and there is a spiritual body. See, that's that other tabernacle we waiting on. Remember in 1st, 2nd Corinthians 5, he said, we waiting on that other tabernacle, be clothed upon that other tabernacle, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. See, right now, we dealing with mortality. We dying. Death is winning right now. When they lie to you at a funeral that the person not dead, they putting blinders on you to make you think death is not really winning. No, death is winning right now. It ain't going to win in the end, but it's winning right now. Death is winning. <laughs> Go ahead. 45. Uh -huh. And so it is written. Uh -huh. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The first man, Adam, in the garden was made a living soul. Breath in his, no in his nostrils. He was a living soul. But that's not what we want. Go ahead. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That refers to Jesus because he's, he's the last Adam, the one that died and resurrected. He was a spirit. Go ahead. How be it that which that was not First, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Adam in the garden came before Jesus was born as a man and died and resurrected. Adam was made a living soul in the garden. Jesus died and resurrected as a, he came back a, a spirit, a living spirit, a spirit being, which is what we want. Go ahead. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Uh-huh. Go ahead. The first man is of the earth. That was Adam. He's of the earth. Came from the dust. Go ahead. Earthy. Uh huh. The second man is the Lord from heaven. That was Jesus. He came down from heaven, died, and resurrected with that spiritual body again. Go ahead. 48. Mm -hmm. As is the earthy. That's right. Such are they also that are earthy. That's us. Go ahead. 
And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. That's Jesus, and we're hoping to follow. Go ahead. And as we have borne the image of the earthy. Well, those of us living right now, we're still bearing it. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we got it on now. Go ahead. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We're looking forward to this, because this body don't make it forever. Go ahead. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we need that spirit body anyway. Go ahead. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Uh huh. Go ahead. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh huh. Somebody going to live to the Lord come and they won't never die. They just going to get the switch made. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an uh, eye. Oh, here's the timetable. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, what? At the last trump. At the last trump. Go ahead. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Wait a minute. Until the trumpet sound, the dead still sleep, right? In the dust. But when the trumpet sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Now you can finally say, sister so-and-so is not dead. And it won't be no dead body to disprove you. This is what he said. In a moment, in a twinkle of eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised. So they could not have made a quick home going as soon as they died to be with the Lord because they wouldn't have been nobody left to be raised. That's why that preacher had to make up a lie, say they're going to reunite. Well, read that to me in the Bible. Go ahead. And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed, 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. That's right. And this mortal must put on immortality. Oh, wait a minute. This corruptible got to put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. As long as you living in this flesh and blood body, you still a mortal looking forward to death. Don't matter how old or young you are. You're still a mortal looking forward to death. And once you have died and in the grave, in a casket at a funeral, getting buried, that's proof of your mortality. That's proof of it. That's like when they talk about the killing rate and the mortality rate. That's proof that you were vulnerable to death. You suffer death. But once you come out the grave, then that's what he told you in 2 Corinthians 5. We wait no mortality to be swallowed up of life. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. We haven't done it yet. Not at a funeral. Not till the Lord come in that last trumpet blow. Go ahead. Then once that happened, then you could say so-and-so is not dead because you're going to see him alive. You ain't going to see no dead body talking about they're not really dead. That's ludicrous. 54, this is it. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. When this finally get here. When this, this is a corruptible body we wearing right now. That's why you can do something real simple like kick your toe and you be limping all. Oh, man. Because you corruptible. But once this corruptible put on incorruption, and what else? And this mortal shall have put on immortality. And not before, but once this mortal put on immortality, then what can we say what? Then shall be brought to pass the, sta the saying that it is written, uh -huh. death is swallowed up in victory. Nah, you didn't beat death. Because you living. Hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs> We're going to have the announcements. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your DVDs and CDs up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other study classes, Question and Answer Bible Study, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central. Via conference call line at 712-432-1620, access code 609-910. Also stream live from our website, thykingdomcome7.com. Children's Bible class, ages 4 through 12, every Sabbath at noon. 
Teen Forum Bible Class, ages 13 through 19, every other Sabbath, Saturday at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium and or speak with Brother Oscar. Following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance. Nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head covering, and women should wear a head covering such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young children becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitor area in the rear of the class. Any ties and or free will offerings should be put in an, envelope, an offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. Until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. Okay, we're going to go ahead. And before we close, I'm going to mention a couple of things. We have been we have been requesting prayer and still request prayer for a few people that we that asked uh, a sister Loretta that's in uh, she live in New Jersey. We got people all over all over the country who saw us when we was on the Travel Channel for a couple of years, and they still getting the word and following us. So she did have surgery last week and uh, is is recovering okay, doing a little rehab now. But she definitely wants you to keep her in a, in her prayers. Her brother Cornell, he's he doing better. I told you he had a stroke. He live in New York, uh, but he's doing better as well. The last I spoke with him, and uh, I mentioned Sister Donna in L.A. She did have surgery last Friday. Keep her in your prayers. She maintaining the, the last that uh, I spoke with Sister Monique. Um, also, we mentioned uh, Brother Andrew. Brother Andrew doing a lot better. He out the hospital, uh, doing better, still re still recuperating, but he's doing better. If you can keep him in for those that know Brother Andrew. I was in Atlanta uh, this past Sabbath, like I said, and saw Brother William down there. Some of y'all remember we were praying for Brother William. You can still pray for him. He maintaining. He... Uh, had his leg amputated about a year ago, this time a year ago. Only way, only reason I know because Facebook reminds you everything. So, uh, but yeah, he was at church on the Sabbath. He's doing a lot better. He's, as a matter of fact, you know, the last time I saw him, he was still in a lot of pain. He still got issues to deal with, but he's, he's doing a lot better, not in the, as much pain initially. So, but keep Brother William down in Atlanta in your prayers as well. And uh, like I said, Atlanta, it was real good. We had a nice turnout. I got out of hand with the lesson. The same lesson I did in Cincinnati, I don't know how I did it in two and a half hours. I got carried away in Atlanta. Sometimes I get too, y'all know I get carried away. So <laughs> I got too into it too much. It went a little over three hours, more like four. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but, uh, brother, Brother Zadar told me out. He said, oh, I got a license now. I can go, I can go four hours. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was good. Everybody did seem to enjoy it. I ain't see uh, too many people. I told him, I said, by one point, I was like, hey, if you got to get up and stretch, walk outside, do whatever. But that's, it was dealing with Israel. So, you know, like a lot of times we do, I did, when I did this lesson here, I did two parts. So it was like five, six hours because I did Friday night and then Saturday. So I just put it all in one part. That's why. So that was really good to do it in four hours. So that's what it was. So, uh, but that, you know, we're not used to that, but I can read you in the Bible. You go back and read where Ezra and Nehemiah was putting true worship back on the, on the map. Hey, they was doing the same thing, reading the Bible. They said morning to noon, take a little break, and went from noon to evening, dealing with the Word. So what better thing to do on, on the Lord's Sabbath day? So uh, that, was, uh, that was good in the line. They doing good, study, study increasing. They doing good as far as because uh, we got the Jacksonville class, which I got to make it back down there eventually, but the brothers from Atlanta, they holding it down. 
just like the brothers in L.A. We ain't flew out to Vegas uh, in a long time, but the brothers from uh, L.A., they drive to Vegas every Sabbath. Somebody drive usually. Like tomorrow, we got uh, Brother Travis out there. He going to uh, teach, but normally the brothers from L.A. drive. So uh, Atlanta doing the same thing, holding Jacksonville down. So uh, other than that, I want to mention, too, we got this uh, youth day coming up, February 19, 2017, 12 to noon. So that's some, something done for the kids. They do a little talent show. and how We always have some word, have a lesson. It's a Sunday, but it's something for the kids. They're going to have some food and stuff. So, And if we was at a regular traditional church, we'd be like, and tickets cost. <laughs> See, but tickets don't cost nothing. We ain't. All you got to do is show up. So it's a little thing for the for the youth. February 19th, Sunday, 12 to noon. The lesson going to start probably around 1 o'clock. And then the kids have a little talent showcase, et cetera. So uh, that's a good thing to do. And uh, like I said, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he would not depart from it. So that's on February 19th. Uh, also, I've been meaning to mention this. I mentioned a little bit during the lesson. You know, we, we've been trying to do, some of the brothers and sisters have been doing a little more charity. So anybody interested, you can see Brother Nehemiah. But, you know, we're trying to do things physical to help people as well. And that's always hard because you... Don't, uh, you know, it, it, when you want to do good, sometimes it's hard to, to find out how to do it. So we've been trying to feed some homeless people and uh, visit the people in the nursing home. So if anybody interested in being a part of, like I said, you can see Brother Nehemiah. It's been going pretty good. Uh, visiting nursing, been visiting a nursing home on a regular basis. And uh, we want to find, for some reason, people making me think it ain't no homeless people in Gary, so I don't understand that. So I don't see why we end up going to Chicago to kind of feed some homeless people, but I, it got to be somebody hungry in Gary. So uh, <laughs> he said, you ain't lying. So uh, some of us up in here be hungry in a minute. But So if you're interested in helping out, you like I said, you can talk to Brother Nehemiah on that. Also, uh, last but not least, we're going to go on another excursion, so to speak, in, in March. The first Sabbath in March, me and some brothers from the different camps, we're going to be down in Durham, North Carolina. We got a number of people down there that want to get baptized. We're still trying to finalize the plans. But Lord, Lord willing, we're going to be in one of those locations because we've been talking to the college down there, North, uh, North Carolina Central University. So we probably can use their facility, but we're trying to line it up because we're going to have a Sabbath lesson and a baptism. So that's March the 4th, though. So we're preparing for that in Durham, North Carolina. We got some people from that area, Riley, and people that's in uh, Charlotte, you know should be there and, 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 and any other places that's close on March the 4th. We're going to try to probably start the usual time around on those occasions around noon because we got a lot to do. We have a Sabbath lesson and then have a baptism and uh, hang around, do a little question and answer, et cetera. So that's March the 4th, Durham, North Carolina. Like I said, it's either going to be at the college or at the, uh, one of the hotels there. We're looking at one hotel particularly at this point, uh, which is uh, the Millennium. So either North Carolina Central University or Millennium Hotel in Durham, North Carolina, March the 4th. And with that said, if nothing else, we're going to face the rules and close out. I think we got a little refreshment, so we're going to ask the Lord to bless the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body in Jesus' name. Our Father, 
Our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And and the glory forever forever praise the lord praise the lord for he is good for he is good and his mercy endures forever and his mercy endure forever praise the lord god of israel praise the lord god of israel for he is good for he is good and his mercy endures forever and his mercy endure forever these things we pray in jesus name these things we pray in jesus name the holy one of israel the holy one of israel the mighty one of jacob the mighty one of jacob the lord of lords the lord of lords and king of kings and king of kings amen amen Man. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good lesson, yeah. All right.